weird girl, so I don't find a lot of things that weird. That's probably why I fit in so well. Coming up on this episode of Movie Star, a look at the career of an Oscar-winning actress who evolved from model to monster. This just felt like the kind of part that De Niro gets to do, or Dustin Hoffman, or Jack, you know? This renowned beauty remains determined never to win a role because of her looks, which makes Charlize Theron's Academy Award for Monster all the more satisfying. Physically, you know, awesome. She's an Amazon. She's beautiful. Her eyes are piercing, and her acting skills are really strong. Brilliant, incredible. Really, uh, really, uh, really just solid actress. Really great. It's tough for a woman of her beauty to kind of be taken, you know. I don't know if the word is seriously, but you know, to kind of look beyond her beauty and really see how talented she is. Theron's beauty is one of the reasons she is a movie star. But according to film historian Rick Kent, audiences are intrigued by her history. What makes Charlize so popular is she is the classic Hollywood success story. Raised on a farm, sent at the age of 16 by her mother from South Africa to Europe to become a model, which she does. She returns to South Africa, and at the age of 18 or so, she's sent by her mother to Hollywood to become an actress. And she gets to Hollywood, she doesn't know anybody, she barely speaks English, she teaches herself English, she learns how to speak like an American, and she just becomes a star. It's an amazing story, and it's the type of story that people just love. Theron was born on August 7, 1975, in Benoni, South Africa. She's named after her father, Charlie. I grew up on a farm. And so it was just one of those things where, you know, when you're five years old, you start sitting on your dad's lap, driving the tractor and driving the pickup truck. And um, my, my parents were mechanics. So I grew up with, you know, spark plugs and rotten engines all over the place. Charlize was a professional model when, at age 15, she witnessed her mother kill her father in self-defense. In hopes of putting that behind her, she moved to New York three years later to study dance with the Joffrey Ballet, but then she suffered a career-ending knee injury. I was so sucked into, you know, my ballet, and I thought I was going to do that for the rest of my life. Theron moved from New York to Hollywood, where she lived in a small hotel before earning an uncredited role in her first film, the horror thriller Children of the Corn 3. One year later, in 1996, Charlize was discovered. It was only 10 years ago that right down from here, there was a bank just two blocks away from here where I was discovered. And if somebody told me then that this would happen one day, I would have laughed in their faces. Theron's 1996 movie releases include Two Days in the Valley and Tom Hanks' directorial debut, That Thing You Do. She was tapped by Tom Hanks to be in That Thing You Do, which was not a huge film, but it was a film people were watching because it was Tom Hanks' debut as a director. And she became the breakout star from that movie. And I think that's what really set her career going because that led directly to starring roles. That Thing You Do, about a rock and roll band in the early 60s, was not only directed by Tom Hanks, it was also written by the star. Theron was the first actress to audition for her part and the first person Hanks cast in the movie. As a longtime fan of Hanks, Charlize believed working with him was a golden opportunity. That works too as long as you're staying up around the mic. The more it looks around in general. It was really amazing, and, and I feel very blessed to just, you know, have a small part to do with it, and it's something that I would cherish for a very long time. Charlize was just as proud of the drama Two Days in the Valley. This is where we get to enjoy it, you know? This is like the pat on the shoulder saying, you know what, you guys did good work, and that's why you get the red carpet. Did you not know that? <laughs> One of her very early films was Two Days in the Valley, and she was really noticed in this. It was a very small, independent film. It didn't make a lot of money, but everybody said, who is that blonde in the white outfit? Charlize was on her way up but she still had to compete with other actresses for the roles she wanted. There are plenty of beautiful, talented actresses in Hollywood. Theron had to prove she stood out. 
Next, she chose a romantic comedy starring opposite two established actors, Jeff Daniels and Michael Richards, in Trial and Error. At that time in my career, <clears throat> it was really something that I wanted to explore, playing the girl next door and, and yet make it truthful enough to not look too hokey. Trial and Error received some good reviews, most complimenting Charlize. Her next 1997 release, The Devil's Advocate, co-stars Al Pacino and Keanu Reeves. Again, Theron had to fight for this part, convincing director Taylor Hackford she was right. Already swimming with the sharks? <laughs> it was just a part that I wanted really badly. And, and if you truly find a part like that, then it's so, it's so worth fighting for it. Um, because in the long run, it just pays off so amazingly. I, I screen tested four times basically because hmm, Taylor Hackford, the director, thought that I was too beautiful to play uh, Keanu's wife. What normally works in Hollywood is, you know, she's a beauty and she's statuesque and, you know, I thought, well, wait, wait a minute, this is going to be Kevin Lomax's wife, uh, you know, and the person who ultimately is the human sacrifice in this piece. Uh, you know, how is he going to be interested in other women when he's got her? But the thing that's interesting, we adapted the script to fit the actress because she was so good I had to give her the role. With five movies under her belt, other noted directors were discovering Charlize, including Robert Redford and Woody Allen. 1998 was a busy year for 23-year-old Charlize Theron. She could be seen in a Woody Allen comedy, Celebrity, and as the starring role in the remake Mighty Joe Young. In this Disney family film, co-starring Bill Paxton, she plays an animal preservationist who fights to save a gorilla from poachers. She raises this baby gorilla, and they basically become friends, and they take the face of a brother-sister relationship, best friends, father-daughter, that protective. It's, it's a beautiful adventure. It's got everything. It's a beautiful adventure with a great love story, a great action, um, and just heartbreaking, really heartbreaking. Charlize, I took my cue from her. She, she brings so much to this movie and her relationship with Joe. Joe, a big guy. Mighty Joe Young was close to Theron's heart. She fights for animal rights in real life. Professionally, the starring role proved beneficial for the actress, who was still carving her niche in the industry. But in 1999, the sci-fi thriller The Astronaut's Wife barely left a mark. Later that year, critics were giving Charlize thumbs up again with the release of The Cider House Rules, which was nominated for an Oscar and won the Academy Award for Best Screenplay. Getting the hang of it. It's turned into a beautiful love story, a coming of age story, a story of a young boy um, experiencing life and, and finding life and, and learning what life is really all about. And, um, and it's also about a young girl that, that gets torn with, with a lot of questions and, and things that happen in her life, and that I really love. Marker. After the Cider House rules, Theron's career picked up, and she had four films in release during 2000. The first, A Misstep. Reindeer Games, co-starring Ben Affleck, was poorly reviewed. Background action. action. Her next movie, The Yards, was nominated at the Cannes Film Festival. The crime drama co-stars Mark Waller and provided Charlize with the chance to play a strong female character. At that time, I wasn't a big enough name, and and I knew that I was going to have a hard time getting these kind of parts in Hollywood, and that they don't come around very often. Charlize also had the chance to show her acting chops in the biopic Men of Honor about the first African-American Navy diver. To find out that it was a true story, it was really amazing. And then um, meeting the real Carl was, it's just amazing that somebody actually lived that kind of life. Also thrilling for Charlize, she plays most of her scenes opposite movie legend Robert De Niro. And she was just as enthusiastic about working with another legend, Robert Redford, who directed her next movie, The Legend of Bagger Vance. Everything she did, she did well. And there wasn't a wrong move made, which, which told me that she had good instincts. She had natural ability. And, but this character, to me, was going to be a powerhouse and would require an actress to step up to having to play two or three things at the same time. I just felt that she could do it. And then I met her, and I, I decided that she, she could. I love it that there's moments in this film where we go, well, how, do, how does that happen? I mean, can that really happen? And Bob goes, it doesn't matter. It's magic. It's, 
that's what it is. And the mythology behind it is, is something that was very intriguing to me. Set after World War I, the legend of Bagger Vance is the story of a war veteran who enters a golf tournament hosted by his former girlfriend, Matt Damon co-stars. At the camera, nice smile. It's a huge challenge for somebody who is from, from, not from the South here, but from South Africa, to come in and play this classic Southern Belle role. Um, and uh, and she's, and I, I'm just really impressed with how hard she, she works at it and how, and, and how good she is. The legend of Bagger Vance didn't meet box office expectations. And one of Theron's three movies in 2001, Sweet November, was another misstep a romance co-starring Keanu Reeves that failed with critics and at the box office. Charlize was just happy for another chance to work with her devil's advocate co-star. She even turned down the female lead in Pearl Harbor to take this role. We became really good friends on Devil's Advocate and um, we, we live in the same town. We see each other around. We have, we have great laughters together and it's, it's nice to be able to work with somebody that you, that you know a little bit and that you get along with. It makes it a very, very pleasant experience. I feel that we work well together and um, she's such a fantastic actress and it's, the work she's been doing in this is, for me, I've just been astounded. These things take time. You don't have time. Theron worked with another former co-star for her next 2001 release, Robert De Niro, in the crime drama 15 Minutes. Then she made a new Woody Allen film, The Curse of the Jade Scorpion. The following year, Charlize worked on a movie with her boyfriend, Irish actor Stuart Townsend, the thriller Trapped. And she co-starred with Patrick Swayze and Billy Bob Thornton in the comedy dud Waking in Reno. But after these small pictures, Theron was ready for something big. The Italian job, an action adventure released in 2003, fit the bill. The movie, about a heist of gold bullion, features 32 Mini Cooper cars, which the actors had to learn to stunt drive. It's always fun when you get to learn another skill, you know? I love that. I love the challenge of, especially on this movie, having to, you know, going to driving school for three weeks prior to doing the movie and really learning how to drive a car really well and to, you know, know how, how you can really push a car. Theron also liked working with co-star Mark Wahlberg again. I had such an amazing time working with him on the yards and we remained such good friends and you know you never really think you'd have the opportunity again to work with somebody so um, having him involved was definitely a plus. More than having fun and meeting old friends, the Italian job helped to bump up Charlize's salary for future pictures. While this action role got her noticed at the box office, it was a much smaller movie that provided Theron with her biggest recognition in the industry. In Monster, the first film Charlize Theron also produced, she plays real-life serial killer Eileen Wernos. With somebody like her, um, all of a sudden it's a very sensational story, the first female serial killer, and that's all anybody wants to focus on. And nobody's really looking under the rug going, how does this person who um, was a child just like all of us, how did she grow up and find herself in this corner of society doing these things? The role was a challenge. At that time, I just felt like this is really the time for me to maybe do something like that in my career, just, just to really challenge myself completely, truly. I think I, actors walk down here all the time and they're like, it was really a challenge, but you know, I mean, to really, truly just put yourself out on the line. And I knew with this, it was a huge, not a risk, but it wasn't a slam dunk, definitely not. Charlize gained 30 pounds and underwent hours of makeup to transform herself into Eileen Wernos. We met with Tony G who did the makeup, kind of transformed me into Eileen and she works with Rick Baker and comes from a special effects background, but we never wanted it to be a special effects look or you know, turn it into this huge prosthetic thing. And she was incredible and really just taking her talent and studying my face and Eileen's face and knowing what needed to be done for that to happen. So while that was happening, Patty and I could really focus on the internal stuff. I, I think that's what really makes the transition more than anything. At first, only Theron's co-stars, including Bruce Dern, understood her complete investment in the role. This woman will take roles nobody would take. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm sure if they'd offered this to the usual suspects, 
uh, now she is the usual suspect, but before this she wasn't, uh, they'd have been frightened by it. As both producer and star, this was Theron's role of a lifetime. She won every major film acting award, including the Golden Globe from the Hollywood Foreign Press. It's so much, you know, and you don't want to kind of set yourself up or kind of get yourself to a place where then you expect something. And, you know, I don't ever want to get to that place. So it was a th thrill to get this and, and a huge surprise. After the Golden Globes, Theron won a Screen Actors Guild Award and ultimately the Academy Award. It's such a strange sensation where you don't, your body kind of goes on automa automatic and you just hope that everything kind of sticks together, but I was felt very lucky because I had my mom and my boy next to me, so um, I just kind of grabbed onto them for a while until I dragged myself up on the stage. It'll definitely have a huge effect on, on the, her career. It puts her in more in a position of power. She can now pick and choose projects. She can work on what she wants to instead of having to just take what comes along. Charlize's next project playing a 1930s free spirit in the war drama Head in the Clouds, which co-stars Penelope Cruz and Theron's boyfriend, Stuart Townsend. For a while, Stuart and I had been kind of looking for something to do together, and, but for the right reasons, and this just kind of felt, to me, felt like something that I, um, as far as her story, wanted to really be a part of. Head in the Clouds fit in with Theron's philosophy. As an actor, you really search for those parts where you can kind of play that arc of, of extreme this, extreme that. After an Oscar win, Charlize received another recognition, a star on Hollywood's Walk of Fame. I feel so incredibly honored because I get to do something that I love so unbelievably much. Charlize focuses on making movies with a message. The drama North Country, about the first major successful sexual harassment case, fit the bill. I think we should go to Pearson. You know, tell them what's going on. What do you get out of this? Jeez, I'm just trying to make things better. All of these women got their strength uh, from their children because they didn't want to get into another bad situation where they didn't, they weren't independent and they had to rely on a man to provide for them and to bring food on the table. And, Yet they had to endure so much every single day because they couldn't say anything because if they did, they, they were fired. Theron received an Academy Award nomination for North Country. Never in a million years would I ever have believed if somebody said in a two-year period you're going to get nominated twice. It's a little like somehow I got locked in the candy store and nobody knows I'm there. I'm having a really good time. <laughs> Playing a sexual harassment victim took its toll. Theron has said that in order to cope with stress on the set of North Country, she would sexually harass her male co-stars. Her next character is based on a comic book hero created by Peter Chung. She's a futuristic assassin in Aeon Flux. Three, two, one, go. And now. Oh. No. Nice. The instant I kind of saw what Peter Chung created, I realized that she was um, very much a template for a a lot of the female strong action characters that have kind of developed over the last 10 years. Theron suffered a herniated disc in her neck while filming Aeon Flux. She wore a neck collar for a month. Charlize became a United States citizen in 2007 and co-starred with Tommy Lee Jones as a police detective in the crime drama In the Valley of Ela. She hoped the movie would make a point about troops returning from the Iraq war. And we can't expect these, these people to come back and kind of just throw them back into our society and say good luck. I think they deserve better than that and we have to start acknowledging that. 2008 brought three new movie releases for Charlize. Sleepwalking is a drama. If you can make a film where everybody walks out with their own opinion and, and a debate, that's always great. In another 2008 release, Hancock, Charlize plays the wife of a public relations exec who takes in a superhero going through hard times. Will Smith stars. Ray, oh, what happened to the... Not believe it. I mean, this I'm, I'm always interested to go and play women who, who are conflicted and find themselves in environments where, where they have to maybe not always, they don't always get to make the right decision or, or make good um, 
responsible decisions, but where life just kind of takes over and, uh, and emotion kind of takes over and, and human behavior takes over and all of a sudden you see a human being struggling with the same things we can all relate to. Charlize's role in Hancock wasn't promoted, so her character would be a surprise. Her next release, Battle in Seattle, is the story of a group of activists gathered in Seattle, Washington to protest the meeting of the World Trade Organization. I do a lot of films that, that have, uh, you know, multiple layers of the social condition that the characters might be coming from or the political, but that's life, isn't it? I mean, we live in a world where uh, we're structured by politics and, and social conditions. Battle in Seattle is directed and written by Charlize's then-boyfriend, Stuart Townsend. Besides their premiere, Theron was celebrating the fact that she could vote in the next U.S. presidential election. I'm an American now. Are you a citizen now? Yes. So you're voting? Yes, I, oh. this is the first year I'm voting, yeah. One year later, Theron co-starred with Viggo Mortensen in The Road, a post-apocalyptic story. Following its release, Charlize and her longtime beau, Stuart Townsend, split up after nine years together. Now in her 30s, Theron's career is in full swing. She hasn't had a real roller coaster career. It's kind of just skyrocketed, and she's still riding the rocket. As an actor, my job is to go and service a story. And if it means that that takes five minutes or that takes two hours, that's really irrelevant to me. At the end of the day, I want to tell good stories. Thank you for watching the Charlize Theron edition of Movie Star. Join us next time. Enjoy to enjoy even more with that. Look at your favorite stars of the big screen.